Welcome to the Insomnia Project, the holiday episodes. I hope you're enjoying these episodes. I know they're a bit peppier than our regular episodes. So just sit back, grab yourself a cup of hot cocoa with extra marshmallows, watch the snow or the sun or the tumbleweeds out your window as they drift on by. And thank you for joining us here on the Insomnia Project. I have the extreme delight to bring to you one of my favorite people in all the world, a dear friend, Michelle Miracle. Yes, that's her last name. Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine, sir. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Michelle Miracle and I worked on ships, on cruise ships together as performers, and we had such a blast. And I'm so thrilled to have you back on the podcast today, Michelle. I'm thrilled to be here. Miracle. So I mean, I'll, I'll be calling her Michelle and Miracle just so everyone knows. But um, Michelle, I want to talk about the holidays. And we're in this weird sort of period after Christmas, before New Year's. And I want to know, what do you do during this period of time? Are you active and putting things away? Or are you just chilling and like just enjoying these couple of days before another big event? Um, well, I don't really do the same thing every year. I think some years I'm traveling, some years I'm, you know, working in between the two. This year is is a little different for all of us, but I'm I'm definitely just relaxing and enjoying the time that that I have between one holiday craziness and the next holiday craziness. So, you know, I'm just kind of enjoying cooking and watching TV and listening to a lot of podcasts and and audiobooks. So I'm just kind of oh, taking it one day at a time. I love a good audiobook. You know, we've talked a lot about books on this podcast, but we haven't really talked about audiobooks. Let me ask you this. What makes a good audiobook for you? I I am new to the audiobooks. Um I always well, I I was never a really good reader because every time I start reading a book, I fall asleep. So I, I haven't finished very many books in the past 10 years or so. But during this year, I've been uh, checking out books from the library and checking them um, out as audiobooks. So I think over the past few months, I've listened to like four or five books. And I think what makes a good book for me depending on what mood I'm in, is just an interesting story or I, I listen to a lot of biographies and nonfiction. So I get wrapped up in the history of someone's life and just the colorful language of a book. I love nonfiction and biographies in particular in audiobook form. Yeah. Can you recommend something that you've listened that you've enjoyed? Well, actually, um, two of the ones that I've really enjoyed this year came from recommendations of your wife, actually, um, from Tiffany Haddish, her The Last Black Unicorn, and Melania and Me. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm reading that one now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I, I, I also love getting recommendations from people and hearing what they like. And there's certain authors I will just listen to them read their own work, even if I'm not interested, because I like the sound of their voice. Right. If you get a chance, I and this was an author I found difficult to get into. But once I got into his reading of his material, I just had to listen to everything. Are you familiar with David Sedaris? I am. I do enjoy him. If you listen to him read his own work. Yes. It's just a delight like nothing else. He's wonderful. So let me ask you this. What you said you also you're cooking these days. Mm. Are you cooking any holiday fare? Well, I I typically bake a lot during the holidays. Like I'll make cookies and cakes and, you know, bars to to bring places, you know, with gatherings and stuff with friends. Um this year I've made some banana bread and pumpkin bread and but I've been experimenting more with like main dishes this year. Oh, amazing. So, I've I don't know. I kind of experiment a lot with the instant pot <laughs> which is not a sponsor but should be. And um you know, I've been trying to like 
figure out things to make with that contraption. So I've made a lot of soups and sauces and meat and stews and stuff like that. Nothing too Yum. groundbreaking, but delicious. Yum. It all yeah. sounds fantastic. Now, you and I both have a love for something. You could call it a guilty pleasure, but you and I love to take a trip to Starbucks. Oh, yeah. And for me, the holiday season doesn't start, and I know this is going to sound very trashy, so forgive me, until pumpkin spice lattes are available <laughs> at Starbucks. I am not a fan of the pumpkin spice latte. However, there are several other things on the holiday menu that I am always very excited about. Do tell. Um, they have a... I'm going to sound like a very um, big Starbucks addict, but they have a creme brulee latte and a yes. peppermint mocha, which I like. I like to get a, an iced coffee with peppermint syrup. Okay. Yeah. That's refreshing. I love, yeah. I love a coffee that has peppermint in it. You know, sometimes at home around the holidays, I'll make myself an espresso coffee add some milk, and I'll throw a candy cane in there oh. as the stir. So it adds that little bit of peppermint kiss to right. it. And I love that. That's very smart. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the mocha part of it. So I always just try to delete that. It's like, just put the peppermint in the coffee, and then I'm good. Um, and then, you know, of course, all the holiday pastries that are delightful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, here's something that we discovered about you, because we did an episode with your husband, Nima. You're a very good wrapper of gifts. Oh, did he say that? He said he's not a great rapper, that his gifts often look like, I hate to use this term, a dog's breakfast. A dog's but, breakfast. But, but he did say that you he did say that you were I say that only because if he listens to this episode, he'll get a real kick out of that. Um, uh, and Bob's your uncle. That's that's for sure. Uh, these are expressions that Miracle hears us Canadians say. We're going to go into that in just a moment. Canadianisms that Miracle has learned from us. But let me ask you this, Miracle. What is your tips on how to wrap a good holiday present? You know, he just pointed that out to me this this year before Christmas that I am a, an excellent rapper. And I didn't realize that these are skills that just aren't innate to people. And, and I really don't know where I learned them, but um, I just always remember wrapping gifts as a kid. And I guess my mom must have, or my dad must have told, you know, taught me how to do it. But to me, it's, it's very fun to wrap something very beautifully and, and decorate it with bows and have the tape lined up with the, the pattern, you know? Um, and if, if it weren't for bags and tissue paper, Right. My husband would <laughs> would uh, probably cry every year. But um, yeah, he, he can wrap things very well with a bag and some tissue paper. But I like I, to I'll be honest with you. I hate, I hate the bag and tissue paper gift. Yeah, I'm not a fan. It yeah. is definitely easier, but it doesn't look as regal. You know, like if somebody gives me a gift that's very well wrapped and, and has a beautiful bow and a ribbon and you know, a nice name tag and it's beautiful paper, then I'm, I'm more, I feel more special opening that gift. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, it could look like Edward scissor, scissors hands wrapped it. I'd rather have it wrapped than thrown into a <laughs> gingerly placed into a bag with tissue paper. That's where I, I stand on that. I prefer to take a really crappy gift and yes. wrap it beautifully than a beautiful gift and wrap it like a dog's breakfast. Yes. I, I tend to take a, a not so great gift and I put it in several larger boxes oh, yeah, that's and I wrap each box so that the gift is actually the unwrapping more so than the gift. Right. Or then you just, if it's someone you don't like, you can just put a very, very tiny note in the very smallest box that says jokes on you. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, can I, can, can we talk a little bit about your mom, Joan? Oh Yeah. I'd love to. Um, I, I I have such a fondness and a place in my heart for Joan. But were there any holiday traditions that Joan would do or anything that she would do that are, are memories that you have of Joan around the holidays? It's funny. We didn't have a lot of holiday traditions. We weren't a particularly uh, 
strong ethnicity one way or another. We didn't have a lot of um, traditions, unfortunately. So like every, I was just talking to my husband about this the other day, that because I had a lot of older siblings that were all married and had kids um, pretty early on, I was an aunt from the time I was six years old. So our Christmases, a lot of times were going to my siblings' houses. So it'd be like, we go to you know, sister one's house and then go to the next sister's house and kind of like travel on Christmas day to like, you know, around town. They weren't, they were all in town. Sure. But we would go and open gifts with their family and then go to the next house and open gifts. So we didn't all get together because there were so many of us, we couldn't really fit all in one house. Right. Um, right. <clears throat> but I mean, I guess there were some years that we would open presents on New- Christmas Eve and then the next morning we would have like a bigger meal around noon, but yeah, nothing really, really stands out as like, we did this every year. What about you? Oh, that's a great question. You know, so if I think about things that we did with my mom, we would open at least one gift at midnight on Christmas Eve. Oh, nice. So that was our thing. Sometimes she'd let us open them all. So you'd go to bed thinking about the things you wanted to play with the next day. (laughs) And that was a lot of fun. Um, My mother would often make ornaments for that year's Christmas. And I was just talking to her about this. So one year she got this felty kind of material. Like it was, it felt like it was like cardboard that had a felt front Mm -hmm. and a more of a waxy cardboard back. And we made fans. So we folded it up to, or what we did was we took, you know, that glitter glue. Oh yeah. It's kind of like a stick and you press it and it comes out glittery. We we glittered the top of the fan. Then we folded it into a fan, pinched the bottom and and curled it with a bit of wire. And then we glued um, little tiny pine cone type things with little red berries Mm -hmm. kind of at the pinch of the fan at the bottom. Then we opened it up and we put all these fans on the tree. Ooh, that sounds beautiful. I didn't love the look of it, but I had so much fun (laughs) making the fans with her. And then we had these pasta angels that my mother made one time where you take different pastas and you make an angel out of them. Oh, yeah. So like like you glue paper or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you, like you, you paint all the pasta. Let's say you could paint them all white. We had some one that were like just all white or some that you would paint different colors, gold and greens and whatnot. And you'd have a rigatoni as the as the torso of the angel mm-hmm. with a farfalla noodle as the angel's wings yeah. and then you'd put two elbow macaronis as if it was their hands holding a little uh choir book and then you would put i don't know over what what else but you would you would do all these little things and you'd make a little pasta angel and we put those on the trees one time and we would do a lot of those kind of crafts i remember i remember making a lot of um ornaments in school and then those reappearing on the tree every year. Like there was one that I loved growing up that we made out of a pine cone and like a styrofoam head or okay. like a like a golf ball sized styrofoam sure. ball. And so you'd put that on top of the pine cone. That became the head. The pine cone became the body. Then you put like pipe cleaner on either side of the pine cone so that it looked like the arms yes of course and you would put little sequins in for the head for the eyeballs and we made like a little felt hat and then we glued skis look like you know construction paper or cardboard or something on the bottom so it looked like he was a skier holding ski poles and it's hard to explain but it was so cute just seeing this little pine cone skier hanging on the tree where, who who has that ornament right now? I don't know. All that stuff just kind of disappeared when my mom moved a few times before she passed away. So okay, I do have a couple of her old ornaments um, still, but I don't have any of the ones that we made growing up, which I'm very sad about because they were so terrible that they were cute. You know, that they're beautiful. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. I know what I would give to have one of those those fans we made back in the day. So and much I'm sh- glitter. Everything had glitter, right? My grandmother had these plastic 1960s icicles that we put on the trees, right? And I remember them. And they were so, like, 
imagine me in the 80s looking at these 1960s plastic icicles thinking that they were so and they looked they were bright they were like red so it's like it everything about them seemed wrong mm-hmm. and i remember thinking like never giving them much mind or paying mm-hmm. them much attention right and then about a year ago i opened a box that had a projector and in that box were four of those icicles oh. that made me think of my grandmother, one of which was broken that I fixed. And now they're one of my favorite ornaments because I was like, oh, my goodness, all those memories came flooding back to me. And I have four of my grandmother's not expensive, not mm-hmm. wonderful. But for me, the memories that are with, that are held within those um, ornaments are so special. I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom, before she passed away, she lived in kind of a semi-retirement community. It was like a little condo. And sure. so it was just her there and she didn't want to get a big tree. So she had a tiny tree that was only like a foot high. And she had all these little itty bitty ornaments and little tiny string lights for this tiny tree. And when she passed away, I asked if somebody could send me those things because I really wanted to recreate that and have a little tiny tree. So when I, I didn't put a tree up this year cause I just, I wasn't feeling as festive and I didn't want to dig it out of the closet, but I love putting those little tiny ornaments on a little tiny tree and having, you know, a little bit of light and teeny tiny Christmas up on a shelf where the cats can't get it. Sure. <laughs> but, sure. um, but yeah, I just, I love it. Cause it's like, it's a bit of her. And oh, that's wonderful. It's not something that was there when I was growing up, but it's something that she really enjoyed. And so that's nice. Of course. That's wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Here's a question I'd like to ask all my friends, and I don't remember yours, so I'm going to ask you. What is your favorite Christmas or holiday carol? Oh, well, one of my biggest achievements in high school was being in the jazz choir. Oh, I didn't like, know this. You had to you had to really be cool and carry a tune and wear satin like a champ oh. to be <laughs> to be in the jazz choir. So um we would go caroling every year as the jazz choir. We would go downtown Denver and just like carol around. I nobody cared, but it was like a very big prestigious, prestigious um event for us as the choir. So my favorite song to sing was Hark, Hark, or, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Hark the Herald Angels Sing? Um, Oh, Holy Night. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, that's totally, there's two, because there's the, that one, I can't remember what it's called. And then the other one, which is Oh, Holy Night. And it's like a very religious song, but there's something about like hearing five part harmony in this like one part of downtown Denver where it's like curved and echoey. And we just thought we were the coolest. Oh, man. It yeah. sounds cool. Never mind. I don't think that that coolness ages. That sounds pretty great. You know, that's one of my favorite Christmas carols is Oh, Holy Night, which I call. And our listeners would have heard me say this with Leslie, fall on your knees. Fall so whenever I, on your knees. Yes. That's what I call it. So I always, Amanda will say, well, Carol, do you want to hear? And I'm like, can you play fall on your knees? And she keeps saying, that's not the name of the Carol. You should really learn it because it sounds really weird when you scream out, play fall on your knees. So, you know, what? So- another one of my favorite songs, which I don't think I ever heard this song growing up, but only since I've known you and I don't even know why. Sure. I associate it with you, but it's the um, the Christmas donkey. Oh, okay. What's that? Dominic, one? Dominic the Christmas the Dominic the donkey. <laughs> What's funny is I never heard that song until you sent it to me, oh saying this must God. be your favorite song because it's like half an Italian, and it just seems like a song that you would have sung when you were a kid. I don't know. It's just it's... really corny. <laughs> But I love that. I love that it reminds you of me. And this brings me to a great segment. All right. So for my listeners in the UK and in the United States, you've clearly heard my Canadian accent, and I'm sure you've heard me say Canadian things. Thank you to my British listeners who've pointed out that cottaging is not what I think it is. And in fact, is something much more untoward, and I shouldn't be using it in that kind of way. Wait, how do uh, you use it? Going like to the verb. cottage. No, do you know what cottage is? 
No. I'll tell you after this episode because okay, we don't okay. need to get into it because it's okay. actually something that's not not what we should be talking about this on this podcast. Okay. But okay, put a pin in that. Mm-hmm. You're gonna you're gonna let all my listeners have a great laugh because I've known Miracle for years now. She's from Cal, uh, from Colorado, lives in California, and she often will point out my and my and my wife Amanda's Canadianism. So it's if you can start, one of the to- most annoying things about me is that I never let a slip up of the tongue go. Like no, I love it. I, I, it's not annoying <laughs> at all. It's one of my favorite things. So my tell me some tell of your you. favorite. <laughs> Sorry, tell tell you some of my favorite Canadianism. Things, yeah, things that we say or things that you've heard me say or expressions or places or whatever. You're always kind of oh. mentioning it to us, and we always have a good laugh. But I figure now, as we approach the end of the year, I'm happy to just hear it from everyone who listens. The thing, the crazy things they hear me say or my Canadianism. So well, Marco, Do- dogs breakfast, a dog's breakfast, and. Um, Bob, Bob's your uncle, but a lot of them are not PG rated. So I don't okay. know. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't use those ones. Okay. I can't think of any of them. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Now you're putting me on the spot. Oh, it's I don't okay. Know. Don't, don't worry. What? If, the, if they come to you, you just, you just bring them up. I know that well, we're often talking about places we're driving when we're talking to, um, Michelle. I mean, one thing, it's not so much a word, but like, I love, and I used to make fun of you guys that you point when you walk across the street. <laughs> oh, that's what we do though. We, like when we cross the street, you're supposed to look and point. It actually says that on our crosswalks when you, when you press it, you're supposed to actually, and this seems totally normal to me, but only till you pointed it out, does it seem strange that someone just walks across the street with their finger pointed straight forward as if they're on a mission. The first time we did that, Michelle Miracle was like, what are you? We, I think we did it in Los Angeles, didn't we? And you're like, what are you doing? I, it makes me laugh just thinking about <laughs> If you see somebody walking across the street pointing. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the civilized world, that's what we do. I wonder because you're if, like, what is he pointing at? It's to indicate to drivers that we're cro- dog. <laughs> these I'm are the conversations sorry. we have. No, it's perfectly uh, fine. Oh. These are the, these are the things that we talk about, folks, that oh. make us laugh. But then also just like different terms for things, like, um, of course, now I can't think of them. Like the washroom that we go to. Yeah, the washroom, as opposed to the bathroom. Um. A toque instead of a beanie. <laughs> a cottage versus cabin. Like we have that conversation a lot of like, what's the cottage versus, because people here don't really have cottages. Um, Yeah, I can't think. I mean, I know that we have had hundreds of them over the years, but now I, I can't think of any of them. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. We had a good laugh there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there are things that we say that are funny to you as well. Well, I love it when you say things that have an E in it, like Denver, and it comes out Denver, or tin comes out tin. Tin. Denver. You know, we love the Colorado song. Oh, the Colorado set. So there's this classic song about Colorado that Michelle has taught us, but I can never remember the lyrics to any (laughs) song. So I sing it and I kind of get like... I'll get voicemails from Marco with just like the worst made up version of this butchered song. <laughs> uh, it's really good. Do you want me to sing it? Yes, please. All right. So it's, again, something we learned in school in Colorado. And you can put in all kinds of words into the blank. So if I had a blank wagon, I would Ride to Colorado, ride to Colorado. If I had a wagon, I would. If I had a wagon, I would ride to the state where a man can walk a mile high. And then it's, if I had a blank plane, I could fly to Colorado, right? And you do the same thing again. And somebody will be like, dog, (laughs) you know, if I had a dog or whatever. So Marco will call me and he'll be like, if I had a 
bazooka i would go to the state where a man can walk a mile like he'll skip half the song or he'll put in some extra words or most of the times i i won't remember the words that it's a you can walk a mile high and i'll just be like you can climb the mountains really high and miracles like that's not how it goes you would think after 14 years of knowing each other that you would get my song my state Listen, the song is my heart. What comes out of my mouth, I don't know. Sometimes it just has a mind of its own. But just trust me, you guys. There are a lot of things that we make fun of each other for that we cannot say on this podcast. Yes, so fair enough. There are plenty, but the only ones that are coming to my mind are X-rated. So Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So you grew up in Colorado, but you live in California. Yes. Do you have mittens? No. You don't have mittens. No. Do you have a warm hat that I would call a toque and you would call a beanie? Yes. Actually, okay. I just call it a hat. Oh, you just call it a hat? Yeah. I know that okay. there are different kinds of hats, right? For you, a toque is one with a ball on the top or no ball on the top, right? I can't believe I've known you for 14 years. We've had many toque conversations. <laughs> <laughs> because my there's listeners, kinds my of listeners. Apps. And those are different. Those are not well, toques, right? No, those are toques. So my listeners are probably rolling their eyes because it seems like lately all I've been talking about is toques on, on the podcast. But a toque is a winter hat that can have a pom-pom, which is that ball you're talking about, mm -hmm. or doesn't have to have that. They're usually a knitted hat or they're made of a knit. So okay. they don't have to be hand knitted, but they're like a knit. So it's not a fabric rather than um yarn or, or or but if it's like a hunting cap with like flaps ear flaps that is that not a toque that is right. not like i said it has to be a knit that's just called a hunter's cap <laughs> all right <laughs> or are you talking about like the russian the russian fur hats or yeah, yeah those are not toques those are not toques all right all well right. i have a toque that i've had for like 15 years at least and I love it so much. It's my pink hat with the two crazy ponytail looking things on the top. I know. And Where did you get that toque from? I bought it online somewhere, but I, I mean, literally 15 years, it's going strong. And it's, it makes me so happy because it, when it's so cold outside and snowing, you gotta, you gotta hold on to things that make you happy because the snow is cold and miserable. So do you have any Colorado tips for people who might know what it's might not know what it's like to be in cold weather that just come um, naturally to you that you'd be like, all right, here's some cold weather tips from a Colorado woman. Moisturize. Okay. And just pound water. As soon as you get to Colorado, start pounding water. Do not pass go without drinking like 64 ounces a day for the first few days that you get there because altitude sickness is real and it will knock your vacation way down. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. So, yeah. I suffer from altitude and that is such a wise piece of information. Yeah. People think, and, and even me who, you know, hasn't lived there full time for a long time, but I go back a couple times a year. Usually when I go back, I forget. And the last couple times that I've gone back, I haven't drank enough water and I have like gone even higher, <clears throat> gone to higher elevations than just Denver. Like I'll drive up to the mountains or something and I'm like, why do I have such a bad headache? And I feel so sluggish. And, you know, even for somebody who's lived there their whole life, if you go away for a while, you go back, you got to remember that the altitude will get you. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there you go. Well, that that rounds off this episode. Michelle, can we do an episode, a proper episode, not a non-holiday episode in the new year where we talk about Colorado? I would love to. Okay. That's so great. Well, thank you so much for being part of the holiday episodes, Michelle. Well, thank you. And happy holidays to you, sir. I wish you nothing but the best for the new year. Safety, health, joy, peace and a good night's sleep to you and our listeners. And on New Year's, I hope you wake up to a dog's breakfast. Oh, I cannot wait. Thank you, Miracle. <laughs> All right. Well, wherever you're listening from, thank you for tuning in. Please let us know what you think of our podcast. And if you enjoy it, give us a five-star review. And if you hear anything 
on the podcast that you want to bring to my attention, please do so, because I just found out that there was some really loud ads at the top of our um, podcast, and I had no idea because I don't know what ads they put. So I'm going to rectify that for anyone who's like, It's really jarring to hear this Candy Crush ad off the top of the episode. That will cease very soon. So I apologize if that was disturbing. But until the next time, I hope you were able to listen and sleep.